Welcome to Truth of the Spirit. I'm your host, Patty Bruner. Today, we're going to have several witnesses that participated in our recent life in the Spirit. When we witness our faith, we show others how uniquely God loves us. And as we listen to the witnesses, we realize that the Lord loves us too, that we can share their lives, their experiences, and they've been more open for our own. Life in the Spirit invites us to seek God's face, to listen and to see and to hear it with our hearts and our minds. We invite you now to listen to these very special witnesses as we continue our Life in the Spirit presentation series. Welcome. I'm so glad you're here with us tonight. Let's start with prayer. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. Come, Holy Spirit. We thank you for being with us here tonight. We ask that you help us to open ourselves to the fullness of your grace. Lord, be with us as we listen. Open our eyes, open our ears, open our hearts to your fullness. Be with our speakers as they share what you have given them, the wonder and the beauty of what your love does for us. We ask this in Jesus' name, amen. The Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. I'd like to introduce to you our next speaker, Brenda Perrell. Brenda is a mother, wife, accountant, and is currently a teacher at the PRE program with the Edge Aged Children. Please welcome Brenda. My name is Brenda Perrell, and I would like to talk about um, the way God has introduced the communion of the saints to me. So um, I guess a tiny bit of background would be that I have experienced Christ in my life um, since I'd say I was a young teen, but the intensity of those times with him have varied but none compared to the last three or four years that I have spent, that he has spent with me and shown me the depths of his love. So um, I will rewind to 2019. And in 2019, um, this is just before, the year before COVID hit. And um, I had done a few studies and these studies had led me to um, what true worship looked like. And I had grown up as a cradle Catholic and I learned a new word today, which was a CEO, which is Catholic Easter only, Patty Bruner introduced, which unfortunately described also my life as a Catholic. Um, because during the times when I had four very, very young children, um, two in diapers at one point, um, that was, I was CEO essentially for several years until I felt like I could um, maybe manage with only two arms and four children that would not obey. So that, that kind of was my life for a little while. Okay, so um, as I did the study, I learned about Christ's um, true worship. And that led me to understand that the Catholic Church held that true worship. And so I went to a, um, a neighbor of mine actually had a, a very big impact in my life. She introduced me to something called daily mass. I had no idea at the time that people would want to go every day. And I envisioned it being like a Sunday mass, which if you've ever been to daily mass, it's not like that at all. There's no singing and it's very, very intimate. But in my mind, I thought, whoa, well, how could somebody do that? Um, I visited for the first time, and I actually saw her there. Um, 
And then shortly after, I visited um, a women's group called Mothers Growing in Faith. And um, actually, one of the people that was here that day, is, or there that day, is Katie, who's in the audience. Um, that was the first time I ever heard of somebody talk about a saint and how they impacted their lives. Now, I had no idea that saints could speak to you or that you could want to speak to them. So she talked about this saint um, named St. Therese. And St. Therese is a saint who will, um, if you do a novena, which is a nine-day prayer, I had to look that up too, what that was, a novena. And she will send you within those nine days a sign that your prayers had been heard. Not necessarily answered, but that they were heard. And the sign that she sends is a rose. And I, after hearing this, I'd never in my life, Credo Catholic, had heard anybody having received a rose from a saint or had done a prayer for nine days and experienced this. So after that meeting, I go home and I journal, but... It was a quick entry into my, and I said, well, guess what? I found out what a novena was, and this this lady named St. Therese, and I don't really know if I even like the idea of talking to saints, because that's kind of weird, because remember, I had just started to try to come back and learn more about the Catholic Church. And so I was a little skeptical, but I wanted to try it, because her rose that she received was really neat. It was, she actually, I think she, she said she received like a bouquet or something to that effect, like a real set of roses. And yeah, so I was like, okay, well, I'm going to try that. So I wrote in there that I didn't necessarily believe that I was going to get any roses. And I didn't have a specific prayer, especially like a novena is not something you just like pray for, um, you know, that you don't burn dinner tonight. It's like supposed to be for something that's very, you know, important, like a career change or something. So I... I said, okay, well, I don't have anything. I don't know necessarily that I want to um, entrust that to you, St. Therese, no offense, but all I want, all I want is uh, the rose. That's it. So I asked God, will you allow her to send me this rose? And if she does do this, Lord, then I'm in. I'm all in. Like, I am going to be a sold-out Catholic if this happens. Like, the kind of Catholic where I'm going to put a picture on the back of my van, that vinyl sticker, I'm going to order them, and I'm going to put a rosary. And I told him, I will, I'm all in if this happens. And so I, I wrote it down, and I had the proof, right, in this journal. So I, of course, you know, all this has taken time. It's already past lunch, and I need to go pick up the children. I go to school pick them up, and I rush back, and I try to do a quick, like, you know, meal for something to, for them to leave me alone. So I have this L-shaped desk downstairs in the basement, and I knew if I didn't do it quickly that they were going to come find me. So I got <laughs> underneath my L-shaped desk, and I had a little flashlight, so if they, in case they peeked down in the basement, they wouldn't see my head, and I would be hidden. So I got, I already had everything ready and printed. I printed out the nine-day novena. It has a sheet, and you had nine-day prayers already ready. And so I got down on my knees, and I'm under the desk, and it's dark, and I have a flashlight. I'm reading it in the middle of almost finished. I had three sentences left when I hear, Mom, what are you doing down there? I was like, Valencia, I have three sentences left, three. And she's like, I know, but I need to tell you something. And I said, I don't ever get time for myself. Once, yeah, I have three sentences left. Tell me what could possibly be so important that you would take that from me. And I was angry, right? And she's eight years old. And her little round eyes start to have water in them. (laughs) And I look at her and I'm thinking, I'm on my knees here praying. And then, of course, she would be wondering, like, why did I answer her so ugly, you know? And so she, she looks at me and says, well, I wanted, it's, this happened in October, so it's like October-ish. Um, I wanted to give you something. She goes into her pocket and pulls out a petal of a real rose, okay? <laughs> and then I look at her and I'm, I'm, I hadn't even finished the whole prayer, like, <laughs> I hadn't, and okay, so this is a little girl that is at school. I just picked her up. She has not been anywhere. 
there's nothing special happening at school. Nothing has, um, nothing. And I, I can't even speak to her because I'm in such shock that she, and it wasn't crumpled. And I wanted to bring it so you could see it. <laughs> it's crumpled now, but when she brought it to me, it was not. And this is in an eight-year-old's pocket that's, you know, and I was in such shock that I couldn't speak and I just have tears. And so she thinks I'm ha something's wrong. I'm already under the desk and I'm already, and it's dark and then mom's crying and so she has to call and reinforce dad and then everybody comes. <laughs> and, but see, here's the thing is that because I was just for my own self figuring out what the Catholic Church, just all of the, the beautiful truths that we have, all these amazing um, you know, like uh, sacramentals that we have. I, I can't even explain it to them yet because I don't truly understand it yet myself. And so in a quick way, I tried to explain it to my, my family, what it is. But afterwards, um, I thanked St. Therese and I told her I could not absolutely believe that happened to me on that day. And so I looked her up, of course, and I, I bought her books and and of course, she was my most favorite. She was my very first introduction into the communion of saints. And goodness, we all have our own favorite saints now. And that was about three years ago. Um, and I wanted to end with um, one of my, one of the quotes that I feel like um, really embodies her. Um, she has this book then in her like spirituality, they, she, they call it The Little Way. And so, one of her quotes is, our Lord, our Lord does not look so much at the greatness of our actions, nor even at their difficulty, as at the love with which we do them. And it, that was one thing that after meeting her and like speaking to many of the other saints, I, after I knew that, I was convinced that they are our living brothers and sisters. And we can all, all of us are meant, you know, to to try for holiness, right? And she is the one who allows me to use each day and not count it as loss, but tiny little things can get me back on track, right? So I'm very thankful for that um, introduction into the saints. And that really was the, the way that I was also introduced to Mary, that opening of my heart into receiving the communion, our brothers and sisters in heaven now, was I think what allowed me then for my heart to be open to receiving Mary as well. So that was, that's a witness that's happened in my life, I guess. I now want to introduce to you our speaker for the life and the spirit, Mr. Pete Medsker. Pete has been a retired Walmart executive and is now the manager, co-manager of our pantry, the St. Vincent de Paul pantry in our parish. Welcome, Pete. Thank you. Um, my, uh, my testimony begins, uh, as a child, I was very devotion devotional. I was an altar boy. I did all that kind of thing. And that went on, and then I grew and went in the service, and pretty much just forgot about religion and faith and everything else. But thank God he got me out alive, and uh, I moved to Colorado. That's where I met my wife, uh, and uh, by that time I had driven more nails in his cross than, than anything else. And uh, she was not Catholic. She wasn't hearing anything that the priest said about marriage. And, but we loved each other, so we got married in another church. Then I think we examined every religion there is except Buddhism. That's the only one we didn't go through. But she fell in love with the Episcopal Church, and that was fine. And I still went my way without a lot of faith or a lot of anything. Um, and uh, I, w I was working for Walmart at the time, and they 
sent me to uh, Hong Kong to to run that operation. And uh, the buyers would come over, and the first thing they'd ask me was, uh, Sunday, is there a church we can go to? I didn't know the, where, but I found out where, and I started going to church with them. And that kind of rang a bell in me. Uh, you know, maybe, maybe I need to get a little better. So when we came back from Hong Kong, I asked my wife, would you mind sanctifying our marriage in the Catholic Church? And she said, no, let's do it. So Father Sinkler, Mike Sinkler, did that and raised us. And then I became what I call a CC. I'd go to Mass every week, and I'd look at my watch, and when's this going to end? And one day I was sitting there reading the bulletin, and uh, there was an ad for Eucharistic ministers and electors and all that stuff. And I said, well, that's kind of interesting. And all of a sudden, there was a heat on my heart, and a voice said to me, I want you to become a Eucharistic minister. I want you to serve the people with my body and blood. The next day, I became a Eucharistic minister, uh, and that really started me uh, uh, on my way. Then uh, along came Patty and Rick, and the St. Andrew's School of Evangelization, which I still miss, uh, and that really helped me. They helped me a, a great deal, still do to this day. Uh, and uh, uh, while I was thinking about my past, I remembered and I realized that whatever I did God was still always with me. He never, ever left me. He may not have liked me very much, but he never left me. So uh, I got into with Patty and, and Rick, learned a lot there, and Tim and Darcy, and, and uh, just following. So then one day uh, somebody asked me, we're leaving the pantry. Would you mind running it? And I thought about it for a while. Went to the Adoration Chapel a lot. Discerned about it for three months. Finally, God came to me again, and he said, I want you over there. I want you serving my poor. And that's what I want from you. That's where I went. And that's what I did, and still do, as a matter of fact. Uh, but the, the whole thing about my journey and my life <coughs> is that, like Patty says, he's always there with you. Uh, I've been given the gift of charism, of evangelization, and, and uh, encouragement. And um, so far, I've evangelized three people into the Catholic Church. Uh, and, but it's a, it's a want to, it's a get down on your knees and pray, and it's becoming with God uh, a, a person you can talk to, you can, you can, uh, and Sometimes he answers and sometimes he doesn't, but uh, it's always there. And uh, uh, today I, I uh, just thank God. I go to the Adoration Chapel quite often and uh, speak with God and more, more times than not. And the way I'm, I can tell, and Patty kind of alluded to this, I get a burning in my chest. And, and uh, then he will tell me, I, I, right now I'm, I'm uh, kind of, I'm 83 years old, so I'm kind of wondering whether I should uh, retire from the pantry or what. So I went to the 
Adoration Chapel. And I asked him, and he said, get over there. <laughs> I want you to stay there. So I'm staying at, it had been a time in my life when uh, it wasn't good, I wasn't good, uh, and, but God still sat on my shoulder the whole time. There you go. Yeah. Our next speaker is Lissa Applewhite. Lissa, who has been a speaker for Truth of the Spirit before, is currently a hospice RN, and we're glad that she's here with us to share her story. It's Lissa Applewhite. I was cradle Catholic, raised um, by very devout parents. My father attended Mass every day, and we would have breakfast after he got home from Mass. My parents played a very strong role in my upbringing, plus CCD at the church. When I became an adolescent, I didn't, I, I don't think I had a crisis with God as far as not believing, praise you Jesus, um, but I started saying, is this religion, is this what I've been taught where you are? So I started, you know, looking around a little bit, but God did a wonderful intervention in that I got invited. I, I was able to attend a search for Christian maturity. I was too young to go. I was not old enough, but they needed people. So I got to go, and this was an epiphany, a beautiful epiphany. I found out that that God, Jesus, Holy Spirit, everybody that I, that I had in my upbringing was very real, and he wanted to be a part of my life in a very, you know, in an active way. Well, about the same time that happened, my mother, who was a convert, got invited to a prayer group at St. Thomas Aquinas. And she started going, and then soon after that, I went with her because I was so excited about all this, and my dad didn't want to be left at home, so he came too. And the, le the priest over that prayer group was Father Dienert. It was a lot led by college students. And anyway, and I could go into, it was a wonderful prayer group. And not too far into my experience, I got prayed over for the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And I had a beautiful outpouring. And I was excited. There wasn't many other high school students that, you know, in my parish that were necessarily experiencing the same thing. So I kind of got close to some of the other, the other, you know, more, I don't want to say religious, but, but there's more spiritual people. And it was outside the Catholic Church. But God just did beautiful things in my life at that time. And I... Went away when I went. I went to a Catholic college, and when I went away, it it was great. I still stayed in a spiritual community, and I was very strong in my faith. After I graduated, I moved away. You know, doing my wings. You know, I'm going to be, you know, on my own, and I did not have that spiritual community that I had previously had. So I, I'm going to say for the next probably 10, 15 years, I never lost my faith. I never lost knowing that God was a part of my life. 
But for that time, I did not nourish my faith. I did not grow in my faith. I just did what was expected of me. Go to Mass. Any time things would come up in my life that were difficulties, I quickly pulled that faith back in and asked God to help me. And so my prayer life accelerated for that time till things sort of settled down. And then I kind of went back to the old habits. Then about 20 years ago, I, I was going through a very difficult situation. Um, I was not in a godly marriage. And I had to lean on God a whole lot. And I felt like I really had to step out in faith to really start living my faith more and putting myself in the correct place, which was with other believers and not just attend Mass. And um, God, <laughs> you know, brought me out of that marriage. It was during that time that I really started again nourishing my relationship with God and praying. And like I said, I did not seek a divorce for really for years, even though it had been recommended for more for financial reasons. But anyway, I just kept praying. I kept praying. I kept praying. God has always been with me. When I was baptized, I received the Holy Spirit. In confirmation, it was lit up. And soon after that, it really was not that long after my confirmation that, that I had that experience with God. And I had such a vivid beautiful relationship with God as as an adolescent and young adult to start out with that I think always carried me through because I could think back to how happy I was and fulfilled so when you know I kind of always held on to that just a little bit but I was doing living my life I wasn't necessarily um, doing what I needed to do but when I did start nurturing that relationship again it just it just builds I mean Jesus and the Father and the Holy Spirit have been there the whole time just waiting for me to want to deepen that relationship God created us. He wants to be in relationship with us. It falls on us to want to be in relationship with Him. And I, I'm going to tell you in the last this last 20 years that I have um, worked on my relationship and tried to deepen my relationship, and I am ever growing. I am far from where God wants me to be. But as long as I continue to seek Him and allow Him to guide me, I'm moving in the right direction. I don't want to go back to where I was when I was, you know, a young adult. I'm very happy with where I am, and I know, I, like I said, I'm not by no means anywhere where I need to be. But by being open to Him and being willing to seek Him and listen to that voice, I have been through, I've been through cancer treatment. And literally, when I was in cancer treatment, it was the footstep poem 
he carried me through my cancer treatment. My relationship with God was so deepened when I went through that. I was not angry with him. I didn't feel like he caused it. I relied on him to make it out the other end. And I did. Just got my yearly report. Smiley faces from the oncologist. You know, it's... I know that my life is in God's hands as long as I allow it to be there. And I hope that each one of you can take it to prayer and let God show you where he is leading you and the bountiful mercy and blessings and graces that he has for each and every person here. I'm no better, no worse than anyone else. But God has a purpose for me. And as long as I allow him to guide me, I'm going to continue to experience that richness that I have with him but it's in our control. We received him at baptism and he is just waiting for us. You've been listening to Truth of the Spirit. I'm your host, Patty Bruner. We hope you've enjoyed our Life in the Spirit presentation. And we invite you to check out our website, patriarchministries.com, for more information about this life in the Spirit and all of the other things that Truth of the Spirit has to offer you. And then we invite you to come back next time because there's more with the Holy Spirit. There's always more. Amen. This is the Padua Podcast Network. Padua Podcast Network.com.